everyone, welcome back to Faith and Flower. This is Robin and in today's video, I've got cleaning motivation and some homemaking inspiration, including some ideas for filling your freezer and easy lunches. My day started with an appointment, so while I was out, I stopped by the library to pick up a book and by the grocery store to replenish some of our produce. I bought a few avocados, a couple that are firm that I can use later in the week after they ripen up. And I love putting most of our produce when I can in these produce bags. I have them in my Amazon store if you wanna check them out. They have the weight of the bag in case you are measuring things and weighing them from the bulk bin. And the stickers can be scanned straight through the bags so it makes checkout super easy. I love using these instead of plastic bags. They can be washed and reused, so whenever possible, this is what I put our produce in. Here's the other avocado. I got one that was a little on the soft side so that I can use it right away for making some guacamole. I grabbed a grapefruit because we love those with breakfast, and I got some white nectarines. We haven't had those in a long time, so I'm anxious to try those out. And I got a big bag of fresh yellow peaches which are in season now and I love. Whenever I see these Hood River cherries, I grab some. They are so delicious. They're huge. They're very sweet and firm and juicy, exactly how I like them. So those came home with me along with some strawberries and spinach for making the spinach salad that you guys know I love. And we were running a little low on milk, so I went ahead and picked up one of those. And just in case you think this was a totally healthy produce run, <laughs> I also picked up some sweet treats so we try to hold off on sweets until the weekend and Patrick has been craving some peanut M&Ms so I got the regular milk chocolate ones for Patrick the soy free ones for Peyton and I picked up the dark chocolate for me that's my favorite This is the book that I picked up from the library. It was suggested to me when I was searching another title and it looks really interesting. So I'm going to reward myself later after I have finished my to-do list. I'm gonna sit down and have a nice read. This wasn't on my to-do list, but I need to vacuum because Peyton spilled some of Austin's dog food when he was feeding him lunch today. And I don't know if you guys are like this, but once I have the vacuum out, I figure I might as well just keep going. <laughs> and at first I was just going to do the kitchen, but pretty soon I was doing the pantry, the entryway, everywhere that kind of needed it. <laughs> and I figured I'd just go ahead and knock that off and then the floors would be clean.
On days when Peyton is home, he always takes Austin for a walk after lunch and they've just returned. It's about 100 degrees outside, so Austin is thirsty when he gets back. And you can see why we have to have a mat underneath his water bowl. Sometimes I wonder if he's splashing out more than he's actually drinking. Oh well, dogs and kids, you gotta love them. And something like vacuuming inevitably leads to tidying for me. <laughs> so I quickly straighten up our entryway from the garage so that I can vacuum in that area and get everything back in order. I've been using this shark cordless vacuum for a while now and I love it. And here's one of the features that makes this just extra special to me. <laughs> I love how I can get underneath the furniture without bending over. Back to my original to-do list. So part of homemaking for me is taking care of the family finances. I enter all of the receipts into a program called Quicken on my computer, just so we can track where all of our money goes. And I also have a few bills to pay. Just as I was finishing up, I could hear rain coming down on our metal roof. So usually our summers are really hot and dry here in Texas, but this summer we have had more rain than ever. And this was just a quick cloud burst, even when the sun was sort of out. It brings up the humidity, but it lowers the temperature. So that's been really nice this summer. Ever since our freezer was fixed, I've been trying to come up with some ideas for filling it with meals that I make ahead of time or something that will make meal prep a little bit easier. And here's one that turned out so well, I wanted to share it with you guys. I wanted something really easy that I could throw in the crock pot that is also sort of summer friendly. So I love these Frontera sauces, but I've never tried this one. This is for barbacoa tacos, and the directions are for the stovetop with a Dutch oven, but I'm going to experiment and try it in my slow cooker. All I need is two to three pounds of boneless beef chuck roast cut into large chunks. I skipped that step and did it whole. A uh, medium red onion. I just used a couple of medium sized yellow ones and sort of made a bed for the roast. And then I poured the sauce all over top and that was it. I set my crock pot on low for six hours and just waited to see what would happen. After six hours, our kitchen was smelling amazing. I started taking the roast out of the pot and it was just falling apart. It was so juicy and so tender. So I don't think there was any reason to take that extra step and cut the beef into chunks first. This worked just fine. And then I just took two forks and started pulling it apart. And when I was finished, I returned it to the crock pot to marinate a little more in the juices. Barbara 
Krakoa is traditionally served on tortillas, but I decided to make a sandwich out of it. So I added just a little bit of Sweet Baby Gray's barbecue sauce on a toasted bun and then piled it high with the beef. This was so delicious. I just served it alongside of a simple salad that I threw together and my guys absolutely love this. And I had plenty left over for another meal that I could put in the freezer and warm up for an easy weeknight dinner. If you cannot get the Frontera sauce at a local grocery store, I don't think it's really necessary. I think you could cover the roast with any kind of sauce, something that your family loves, and it would turn out great. Another little tip is to freeze these flat, and then you can file them in your freezer. And I'm also going to be taking some of these along when we go on the RV. Some of you with RVs have asked how I prepare for meals, and this is a great strategy. I can easily store these little packages in our small RV freezer and that will make meal prep on our vacations so much easier. I like how this turned out so much that I also got this garlic pork carnita sauce to use with a pork roast and it will be done exactly the same way in our crock pot. We can enjoy the first meal next week for dinner and the rest I will freeze the same way and either keep in our freezer here at home or take it with us on our next RV trip. In my recent video, Three Easy Steps for Simple Meal Planning, a lot of you had questions about what I do for our lunches. So I thought I would show you a few from the last couple of weeks that we made here at home to give you some ideas. Leftovers for lunch is my best strategy. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of leftovers. Our family loves it, but I also like to come up with ideas to re-represent that leftover in a way that is totally different from how you served it originally. So we had meatloaf one night and the next day I made some patty melts with that meatloaf. My family loves it. It doesn't seem like it's on repeat. <laughs> it doesn't get them tired of meatloaf because it's done an entirely different different way. So I want to suggest sort of thinking outside the box a little bit with your leftovers because it's so easy to make a little extra when you're making dinner so that you can have a quick and easy lunch later in the week. This one is probably something that is not new to you at all, but I want to suggest having the ingredients available for throwing something together that is very easy, something that you don't have to think much about, like tuna salad. So I just take a couple of cans of tuna, I really prefer the ones that are packed in water, and I drain those and add a couple of spoonfuls of pickle relish, a couple of spoonfuls of mayonnaise. I really like to use some minced dried onion. If you have fresh, you could use that. And I also really like the everything but the bagel seasoning. I think it goes great with tuna salad. So you can customize this in any way that you like to make a tuna salad that your family loves. And when you're working on your meal plan and your grocery list, you can just check to see that you have all of the ingredients available in your pantry so that you can throw this together at the last minute. I often serve it plain like this with a little crackers on the side and some fruit. It's also great in a sandwich or as a cheese melt. There are a few different ways that we enjoy it. Pizza is always a hit at our house. We usually have it once a week and I'll try to make enough so that we can have some leftovers for lunch another day during the week. One of my favorite ways to make pizza is to do it on a piece of naan bread. It makes excellent pizza crust. I can freeze it or keep it in the refrigerator and then just pop it in the toaster oven and it's done. We don't eat a lot of prepackaged meals, but it is nice to have a few that you like. We found these chicken and chili tamales at Trader Joe's. They're fresh and they're pretty good ingredients. So I keep a few of these in the freezer or refrigerator for a quick and easy lunch. I served it alongside of some coleslaw that was left over from dinner the night before. And that was a quick and easy lunch that was really delicious. 
And in the summertime, we eat a lot of sandwiches or wraps. They're just easy. They are cold ingredients. They're very packable. <laughs> and so I just take a flour tortilla. I have some gluten-free ones that I can use for Peyton. I spread a little bit of hummus on there, some cheese, turkey, ham, whatever you like, and some greens. Today it's spinach. It could be lettuce or arugula or whatever you like. Roll it all up and you're done. <laughs> so you can serve this alongside of some really nice summer fruit and you have an excellent meal that everyone loves. When I'm doing my meal planning for the week, I really just focus on dinners because as long as I have some of these ingredients on hand, I know I can throw together lunch easily. It doesn't take a lot of planning or thought. Okay, I know I said we try to hold off on sweets until the weekend, but you guys, those M&Ms are calling my name and it's time to take a break. I think Austin needs a little company, so I'm going to have a seat on the couch, grab my library book and my M&Ms, and enjoy a little break. I've only just started this book, so I'm not sure if it's worth recommending just yet, but I have to say, I really like the title. <laughs> the idea of slowing down and simple living sounds wonderful. I hope that today's video provided a little homemaking inspiration for you. Maybe gave you a little bit of meal prep ideas. If it did and you enjoyed it, be sure to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. We would love to have you join our Faith and Flower community. It's easy. All you have to do is click on my picture. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. I look forward to talking with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a wonderful week.